So did you like see Beyonce and Kennedy yeah. at church? Mm -hmm. You saw them all the time. I saw them quite often, actually. Yeah. Did you ever like talk to them at church? Oh, once. <gasps> what did you say? Uh, hi. <laughs> Hello, I'm Joey Nolfi with Entertainment Weekly, mothering today with the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. And as you can see, mother has arrived. I mean, this one needs no introduction, but we're gonna bow down and bask in the presence of a legend in the making. Please welcome Safira Crystal. Hello. Hi, I am so excited to have you here. You have no idea. I was just like doing my research on you. I was just so blown away. I was like, I'm gonna love this one right away. Oh, yay, I'm excited. <laughs> well, thank you very much for being here. Um, I can't wait to see what you do on this show. Um, but I wanna know where you got your start in drag because you do have a very a, a illustrious career in drag. So where are you from? Where are you based now? Well, I am originally from Houston, Texas. Uh, some would say that my start in drag happened in high school when I stole a dress from my mother and a wig from her oh. and some shoes and uh, <laughs> went to school as Leontine Price, the famous opera singer okay. um, from the 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s then uh, on. But everyone thought I was Whitney Houston. And then uh, later on, I put a shirt on. Everyone said I was Alfred Woodard because <laughs> it was during the time of uh, uh, Desperate Housewives. Uh, but like that was my first time in drag. And then uh, Safira's birth would be when I was in college. Um, I was in between schools and I just was in Rochester, New York. And I had a sorority, fraternity brother, sister, um, who was a drag queen. Mm -hmm. And we would go out and I saw this queen come out after my fraternity brother, sister. And uh, her name was Delicious. And I saw her on the stage and I said, I want to be a drag queen and basically stalked her for like a couple of months <laughs> and then got the gumption up to say, hey, will you be my drag mother? Aww. And uh, I started on June 10th, 2009, was my first day wow. as Sophia Crystal on stage. And here we are today on a nationally televised Emmy winning reality television show. Yeah, so I mean, the excellence speaks for itself. And I do love that you went out at your first time in drag as an opera legend. Um, because I do see that you're also an, you describe yourself as an operatic diva with a six octave range. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, as your Instagram says, so she can like sing, sing. She can sing. Oh, yes. I love this. Sing. I love it. How long <laughs> did you study to do that? Or was it just something that like you just picked up on your own? Can you just pick up opera singing on your own? I think you can. I think that all people need to be finessed or, you know, there's rough, there's a rough, um, rock and then the diamond, you cut it out of the mm -hmm. rock. But yeah, I studied um, music since I was 12 years old. Wow. I went to a, the high school for the performing visual arts in Houston, Texas, mm -hmm. which is the same high school that Beyonce attended. Oh, we're gonna get to that. Um, <laughs> I um, then went to the Eastman School of Music in Rochester and then mm -hmm. went to the Longy School of Music in Cambridge. Nice, that is, I love that background. Um, can you maybe give us a little opera? performance right now, <laughs> like two seconds. <laughs> mm, I didn't warm up for this. <laughs> no, no, I can't. That was it, just that um, right there. I was like, <laughs> that's okay. I no. could probably give you the, um, like a note. I just woke up. Uh, <laughs> okay. um, I love it. That's amazing. That's like first waking up right out of bed, like doing. Oh. That's amazing. But I also have a six octave range, so True. it's the it's the top that's not here right now. That was incredible. No, thank, <laughs> thank you for you. doing that. I know Monet Exchange also does yes. um, opera singing. Have you ever like performed with Monet doing opera? Uh, we have never performed together operatically. I don't think we ever. No, we have performed together, but we've never performed together okay. operatically. Mm -hmm. No, I love Monet. She's actually technically my drag niece. She's oh. my drag sister's. Daughter, my drag sister is Honey Davenport. Right. And yes. uh, mm -hmm. her daughter is Monet Exchange. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love Monet. I am so proud to see, you know, an opera girl up there doing the thing. Mm -hmm. Saw her in, in an opera recently, and yeah. I thought, uh, you know, when you see someone, sometimes there's two options. You can get jealous, or you can have, you can be inspired. You can say, if it can happen for her, it can happen for me. And here I am on Drag Race, yeah, yeah. just ready. Mm -hmm. And she's doing like operatic performances at like, it, like, you know, in different cities around the world. So is that like, is that where you usually do the operatic performances or do you even do that at shows like at a club or something? I do it at shows and clubs. I do it in pageants when I compete. 
So, yeah, I love to sing. It's my favorite thing. I don't sing in the opera, but very soon, I hope to. Would you ever put out like an opera album maybe after Drag Race or is it in the works? Yes. Yes. I'm sensing maybe if there's a talent show, we might be seeing <laughs> some opera performance. Who knows? I don't really know about all that. <laughs> no, mm -mm. we don't know what Drag Race is. We're not here I've talking about Drag Race. What am I doing? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> am I wearing? <laughs> <laughs> well, what are we getting at a typical Safira show though? I mean, well, I don't want to say that your shows are typical because I know I've seen them. They are, they are not typical shows. Um, but what is she giving in terms of like fashion, performance? What are we getting from a Safira show? Safira is the queen of big drag. She's the grand dame diva. And by grand dame, I mean grand. Like really grand. Mm -hmm. um, as big as the drag can get is probably much what I'm doing. Opera is, I feel like, some of the original drag, if you know what I mean. Like, it's just big. It's it's amazing. It's um, extravagant. It is eleganza. Mm -hmm. And so I try to bring the opera to what we know as drag and combine them. I am also a host of many things. Being from Texas, I'm kind of just that girl who likes to take over everything and say, hey, um, now you cook this, you go over here, now you sit down. Everybody, uh, let's, <laughs> let's, let's do the, um, the wobble real quick. You know, you know, let's have a good time, that's me. So getting everybody together. On the same the common goal. Yeah. Yes, I love that, efficient. So even though you are, you're in Philadelphia now, you're based in Philadelphia now. I live in Philadelphia, um, yes. So you were originally, like you said, from Houston, from Houston, and you went to the same church also as Beyonce did, and yes. Kelly Rowland. Yes. And you sang in the choir at church, mm -hmm. correct? Did So did you like see Beyonce and Kelly yeah. at church? Mm -hmm. You saw them all the time. I saw them quite often, actually, yeah. Did you ever like talk to them at church? Oh, once. <gasps> what did you say? Uh, hi. <laughs> It was very brief. It was, I remember because I didn't even realize it was them. They were walking down the stairs. I was with Mr. Lee, who was also in the choir. And I was like, on Miss, like we were hugging and walking. And they came down and said, hey, Mr. Lee. And he was like, hey, girls. And they were like, hi. I was like, hi. And then they walked this way. And I was like, who was that? And <laughs> he goes, that was Beyonce and Kelly. And I was like, what? Oh my God. That's who that was? So this was like after they were already famous. Yeah. This wasn't just like growing up, like, oh, I saw Beyonce and Kelly on the stairs, like fully A-list Beyonce and Kelly or yeah. one. And you're just like, hey, who was that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was really into opera. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, but no other interaction other than that. Uh, no, I would, uh, there was a, a story that I remember. <laughs> okay, story time. Um, we were at church, you know, these are very, very famous people. Uh -huh. um, and people at church are there and they see that they're there. And we're having, we're in the middle of, I think either praise and worship or maybe a sermon. I don't, I'm not sure what's happening at the moment. I think it was in the middle of praise and worship. And a woman walks up to Kelly and says, um, can I get an autograph? And she goes, can I just praise God for a little bit? <laughs> like, can we just do that first and maybe after it, we can talk about this part. I was like, girl, right? Like, can I just praise God? <laughs> Can I get my moment to praise the Lord? Her priorities, where she has her priorities. On. Loved it. I That is an amazing story. Um, do you ever use that with people now? You know, just like you're at a drag show, you're like, excuse me, let me praise God for Can a I second before I... Me? Thank you. Can at you the just, meet and greet. You know, well, you know, I establish boundaries very easily. People mm -hmm. don't really try to cross boundaries with me. Yeah. I have a very assertive presence. And so um, I don't really have that many people doing things that they feel like they shouldn't, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, unless they feel really, really privileged. Um, but beyond that, I don't really ever have problems like that. I say, this is what we're doing, we're doing it over here, and when you come out here, you owe me this much. Cool. <laughs> that sounds to me like that's gonna make for some good untucked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm, I'm untucked all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did also read that your father was an MMA uh, trainer? Is yes, that correct? He was, a, he was a coach, yeah. Oh, he was a coach. So do you, did you like learn that growing up? I did, yes. Do yeah. you still keep up with it? No. Oh, okay. No, I don't. Because I was going to say if that came in handy and untucked, but. Let me tell you something. <laughs> None of these girls will ever try me because they know better. I'm also one of the bigger ones of us. <laughs> I don't need to fight. I, I have yeah. cutting looks. I don't even have to speak 
to uh, make someone feel a certain way. I've learned very early in life that fighting is an absolute last resort. Right. Absolutely. I learned to fight to defend myself, to learn discipline, mm -hmm. honestly, uh, mm -hmm. most of all. And then I thought about going into it. My dad was like, you're, no, you're not doing this. This is not going to be your life. Yeah. You're talented. You should do that. And so I don't believe in fighting. Mm -hmm. I, I believe in de-escalating as much as possible. Absolutely. I believe in having an honest, true conversation about the way you feel. If you make a girl feel demeaned and she wants to tell you that and then she wants to jump stupid, it's like, no, okay, hold on. Yeah. What you did was this. This is why she feels this way. Mm -hmm. We should discuss. Just going back to you saying about this presence and this authority that you have, you do. Like the second you walked into the room, it's like you can feel it. You do have a very specific aura about you. And I'm wondering where you think that comes from. Where did you have to learn that from? Or is it something that just comes naturally to you? I really have always been a person who just loves all. And I feel like when you start with love, then your um, presence is filled with love and people are drawn to that. Um, and so I just enjoy the presence of people and and thus I feel like people enjoy mine. Yeah, yeah. And I think that the fans are really going to respond well to you too. Um, so, and one of the things that I, I love about this show is highlighting drag artists from different identities. And I mean, we're still hoping for drag kings in the future, but I read mm -hmm. in an interview that you did in the past that you're actually pansexual? Pansexual, polyamorous, non-binary. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're comfortable talking about that, I mean, I would love to hear more about that journey for you and maybe what it means to represent for pansexual people on a platform like this. Yeah, I am pansexual. I have many different lovers of different gender expressions, um, sexual identities. Um, and for me, I think it means that like, we're not all in one box. Yeah. I think it's very important to know that like, you don't have to be in a box. You can just live and love mm -hmm. and whatever comes your way is what comes your way. Don't lock yourself out to something that could be great for you. Mm -hmm. I am gay as hell, <laughs> but I love women, cis women, trans women. I love all cis men, trans men, all versions of every single person, mm -hmm. um, non-binary people are, you know, melt my soul. Um, <laughs> but like, there's no reason to block yourself off from potential greatness in your life. And that's what I came to, because when I came out, when I was in high school, I told my mom I was bisexual. And she was like, oh, you like girls too still. Cool, that's fun. And then I was like, later on when I was in college, I decided to be gay. And for me, most people say, you don't decide that I had, I had to make this decision mm -hmm. because in my mind, I had to be in this little place. And then I realized that I was limiting myself. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is by Jesse Norman, another very famous opera singer. Um, and she says, pigeonholes are for pigeons. I'm not a pigeon. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna put myself in it. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing I think about this community too, is that there are, especially now, the, the sort of borders between identities, gender, it's just, it's all sort of starting to, I think, break down. And you are a great example of what you just said, of why that is so important. I love to see it. You also said in a past interview um, that you've been sober for a few years. Um, so I want to congratulate you on that as well. Um, so, and Selena Estides and I had a really powerful conversation when we did these interviews before the season last year about that journey. So I'm just wondering if you're comfortable again, um, what that journey has been like for you um, and how is life different now for you? I'm just so here, I'm present. I like to be here. Um, I get high on the presence of other people in the nightlife. You know, you get a lot of alcohol for free. Um, yeah. I drank a lot. I did a lot of um, other things. Honestly, my biggest one was marijuana. Mm -hmm. And it was something that, you know, it's, you know, it's not the worst of, a, of all the things that you could do, but if it becomes something that you are always doing and you never get anything done and you're just always, just, I woke up smoked. Um, Two minutes later, smoked again, watch some TV, smoking. You know, and I'm just like sitting on the couch doing nothing. I have a show I could, should be preparing for, but eh, let me just smoke a light. You know what I mean? And I just decided, you know, I want more for my life. 
than to just be sitting here on this couch. Mm -hmm. I want to be a household name. I want to be the person. I want to be a star. And I'm not going to be able to do that if I'm relying on all these crutches. When I started smoking, I was going through a very rough time in my life. And it really helped me cope. And I said this to my mother um, because I was trying to get her to stop smoking cigarettes. And I said, after I put down my crutches was when I could actually start walking. Hmm. I could start moving towards my actual general direction. Mm -hmm. And so if you feel like you need to be sober or you want to like abstain for a little while, do it. Your brain changes because you were just on the crutches. I think a lot of people are going to take a, away a lot from you this season, just from this little interaction that I'm getting with you right now. I think it's very important what you're saying and I really thank you for opening up about that. Another thing I want to talk to you about, I know very important to you, you referenced it a little bit uh, earlier, your relationship with Honey Davenport. You post about her all the time, uh, being your woman crush and platonic life partner, you've called her. So um, I'm wondering how you two met and what your what makes your bond so strong. Honey and I met in uh, New York City at Boots and Saddle. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> so boots. <laughs> like, honestly, when we just met each other, we were like, hey, what's up, girl? Hi, how you doing? And Honey's just such a effervescent, a personality. She's just full of life. I had just moved to New York not too much before then. She had heard about me because I had gone to um, Thanksgiving dinner with Keisha Carr um, in, of New York City. And and she was like, who is this girl? And she looked me up. She's like, oh, she's fierce. <laughs> and when we met, she was like, oh my God, you're amazing. Come to my house. Let's hang out. And we have been best friends ever since then. Like just I think I stayed at her house for like three days. We just were meant to be together yeah. as people. Mm -hmm. um, and we are not, you know, sexually at all, but that is definitely my platonic life partner. Yeah. Like that is my love. I love Honey Devonport. Did you help her at all for season 11? And did she help you for season 16? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Did, and what sort of advice did she give you for this season? Be me. The biggest advice that she gave me was just be yourself. I love you. Everyone else will love you. And I said, okay, I'll just be me. Don't try to do anything. Yeah. Um, you are enough, which is the kind of friend you need. You need someone who always reminds you that you're Definitely. enough. Definitely. Yeah. You, um, you are also both recent Miss America winners. Mm -hmm. um, and I know a fun fact about that, I, Carson Kressley hosts that pageant. Sure does. Correct? Did he recognize you or did he have any sort of, did you have any moments on set of Drag Race since he knew you from that pageant? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like nearly 10 years mm -hmm. I've known Carson. Okay. So mm -hmm. like, it's not like I don't, this person would be like, and who are you again? We didn't have any moments. It was just like, hey, hey. Just like an acknowledgement. Of, yeah. Okay. Just, okay. I mean, just about as much as anybody else would. You yeah. know, just like, yeah. hi, hi. <laughs> um, but, you know, we know. Mm -hmm. Nobody else. It's not, you know, I don't think it's necessary because you can really be objective. Yes. When you're not mm -hmm. like focusing on, oh, I've known you for this song. Let's right. See what you're going to do. Right. Or I've known you this is this song. I love you. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Something I'm asking to everybody on this cast and I'm getting really uh, funny answers. <laughs> what is something that you can tease about the season coming up? Like, uh, we know the twists and turns are coming. Uh, what can the fans expect from the season ahead? And how do you think this season steps things up from Drag Race in the past? Let me tell you something. This season is everything. Everything. The amount of times I looked around and was gagged. And if they're gagging you, exactly. like that mean it's a gag. I don't gag easily. It's a gag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. The reflex is gone. <laughs> but like, it's just, I, I was gagged. This season is everything. And I watch every season and this one is everything. Wonderful. So who do you think needs the Mistress Isabel Brooks drag vaccine, drag delusion vaccine the most? And untouched. Me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Stop administering the vaccine. I don't know. I don't think that anyone needs the drag delusion vaccine. I'm also, I'm such a, I, I don't. Diplomatic. <laughs> I'm very diplomatic. I'm also like, I see the best in people. Yeah. I don't really, I don't really see all that like, mm -hmm. 
I'm just like, oh, you're just so cute. Yeah. Or, oh, you're just so silly. You know, <laughs> you really think this is what it is, don't you? Oh, I like that you're... I just want everybody to be having fun. So I really... I don't know because I'm not really... Yeah. I wasn't really like, girl, who do you think you are? You know what I mean? It was like, if that's how you feel, sometimes you just got to feel that way. Yeah. They say fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a such thing as drag delusion. I think that's a, like, you need, dra drag is the delusion. <laughs> you need drag delusion. Safira, thank you so much. It was really lovely talking with you, getting to know you through this research I was doing on you. You just, you're, you're a wonderful performer. I cannot wait to see what you do on the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for having me. Of course, and stay tuned for more with the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16.